Okay. Hello and welcome to Ron Folks' Celebration of Life event here at uh, Berengaria Farm, his home in Niagara Falls. I want to thank everyone for attending. We have some family coming in from Ottawa. Um, my parents are here and some close and old friends from car clubs, as well as um, um, Rob, who's been here, who's been working here for many years. And on Zoom, we have, um, I don't know who we have, but uh, we'll soon find out and hopefully hear from them as well. So if you would like to say a few words, you can come up and share your experience and your relationship with Ron, that would be lovely. I will begin. And um, uh, what I'd like to share with people are, is my personal relationship with him. And, and as uh, many people know him in a maybe different capacity, but um, I got to know him very intimately. Uh, Ron to me was not just kind and generous and thoughtful and caring, but our relationship just um, was very special and unique. You know, when you're in a relationship, it's very, very common and to you know, have arguments and maybe fight or bicker. Over the years, I've known Ron for so many years, Ron and I have never gotten into, not even a single argument, not even a single fight. There are times where I wanted to apologize and he just would not accept my apology. He's like, there's nothing to apologize for. That really, that really meant a lot, you know, being in other relationships in the past where you know, it was uh, more challenging and difficult, but my relationship with Ron was always very loving and caring. And um, that's one of the things I really appreciated about him. Another thing about Ron that I really admired was his knowledge. He just knew so much about so many different things. Um, aside from his law practice and knowing a lot about, you know, law, he taught me everything about plants and gardening and flowers and trees. Whenever we would go somewhere, I'd be like, what's that plant? And he would know, he would just know. He also was a very big um, car buff. He knew, you know, whenever we would go to different car meets, he would say, oh yeah, that's a 57 Chevy or a something something Ford or so-and-so. And he just knew all of them just from a glance. And I just thought that was incredible. Um, you know, he introduced me to opera and classical music. He just knew, he just had such a wealth of knowledge with, um, with classical music and, and, and whatnot, musicals and whatnot, as well as art. He was just so cultured. He just had um, so much passion for these things. And he was also very sensitive. I remember one time having dinner with some friends here and the opera would come on, he played it in the background and he would stop the conversation and just be like, oh, this is the point where something happens. And it literally brought tears to his eyes. And he would tell them, you know, the opera so he's very sensitive and very caring in that sense. Um, I miss him dearly. I love him very much. And I know a lot of you also admired him and cared for him. So I wanna give everyone here an opportunity to speak. Um, say a few words, great. And then, and then after we speak, um, anyone on Zoom can, and you can raise your virtual hand and my producer, Selena, will um, cue you in. Who would like to say a few words? Green 
that means it's perfect. I might not be perfect, but uh, I am here. Thank you, Jeff. My name is Dean Renwick. I'm president of the Professional Association of Vehicle Evaluators Incorporated, and I'm honored to have been asked to speak at today's celebration of life uh, for Ron folks. I've known and known of Ron for many years and had most recently worked closely with him for the past 20 years, ever since he generously uh, agreed to act as pro bono corporate counsel for the association. I first saw Ron uh, about 40 years ago when he was driving his first Bentley, a gray colored 1950 uh, Mark VI. And someone said to me, oh, that's that lawyer from Brampton. Ron was resplendent with his tweed cap and his horn rim glasses. I was later to learn one of Ron's hobbies was collector cars. And when he approached me in the mid 1990s to provide an appraisal on a wonderfully restored 1956 Continental Mark II that was originally owned by a member of the Pillsbury family. In 2010, the Continental was replaced by a 1984 Bentley Mulsanne, which became a seemingly never ending work in progress albeit a source of pride and joy for him. I know Ron would be very pleased to see that lovely car returned to Berengaria uh, uh, by its new owners, Peter Sang and Meyer Teschelborn for today's celebration of life. As some of you may know, Peter was the architect. Ron chose to design the modifications and upgrades to Berengaria immediately after he purchased the farm from Wayne Thompson. Ron will always be remembered me as a class guy in everything he did. When we attended the Detroit New Car Auto Show for many years, Ron would always ensure we stayed in the downtown Marriott Hotel in the GM Center and that we dined in the Fisher Room, the formerly revolving restaurant atop the GM Center. None of that 60 bucks a night in hotel motel outside of downtown Detroit, somewhere way out along 12 mile road for Ron. Ron also enjoyed fine arts and classical music. One of one on many of our Detroit auto show trips, Ron would spend the afternoon visiting a museum or an art gallery for many years. Ron had season tickets to Opera Atelier in Toronto. And of course, Ron being Ron, those four seats were always in the front row center. Ron was a dedicated monarchist and I believe he would have found comfort in the fact he died on the same day as Prince Philip, Friday, April 9th. I can only imagine the irreverent conversations the two of them have already shared on the state of today's world and so-called leaders. Most of all, I'll remember Ron as a very experienced lawyer with a commanding and compelling presence in court. One of Ron's early mentors was Bill Mackey, an old time uh, Brampton lawyer in whose office on Nelson Street, Ron set up his own practice after Bill's passing over 40 years ago. Like all Ontario lawyers, Ron's automobile personal injury practice was dealt a near fatal blow when the Kathleen Wynne Liberal government severely curtailed the personal injury limits recoverable from Ontario's no fault insurance scheme. But he persevered and several years ago, Ron and I developed a response to the issue of diminished value being a component of damage that should be entitled to compensation under the standard automobile policy. Hopefully our work on that challenge will find a new champion to take over Ron's leadership at the helm. In closing, 
I'm going to share the words of Dame Vera Lynn's 1943 wartime song, We'll Meet Again. We'll meet again, don't know where, don't know when, but we will meet again. Rest in peace, my friend. Thank you, Jeff. I'm Paul Contes, and um, I met Ron in the car club in the late 80s, at the same time as I met Dean. And um, I didn't get to know him well until much later. And I remember wonderful parties here. Once we were invited at Christmas or New Year's, I'm, Christmas was it? We had a wonderful Christmas dinner and it was so perfect in this country house. I'll never forget that. And in the summer we had parties here and we were together in Indiana at the um, World's Voice Ownership Convention. And we had wonderful time there on the train and he was always in a good mood, always boisterous and always knew where we were supposed to go and what we were supposed to do and interested in everything. It was just a great guy. And it's nice to be here one more time. And um, that's it, thanks very much. Okay. Hi, my name is Katie Young. I'm Ron's niece. I um, guess I have a little different memories of him because I remember him as a person who, at my wedding, we were in Mexico and a bunch of the wedding party had gone out to um, a water a snorkeling area with a show and it's a big uh, attraction. And um, we were sitting at the table having lunch and my friend and I were admiring, hmm, what are those interesting pineapple drinks? So Ron calls the waiter over gets us those pineapple drinks. I'm not sure snorkeling after rum punch is a good idea, but we did it anyway, it was fun. And I remember Ron sitting on the floor when he came to visit us playing Lego with the kids um, because that's what he wanted to do is play Lego and be in the action. Um, we have pictures of him with the kids at Halloween. And uh, I remember him here with the dogs. It was um, not these dogs earlier when I was high school or a little later. And he'd line all the dogs up for treats. And the dogs would get too excited. So they'd have to go do a circle and then they could have their treat and him teaching Freddie how to ring the doorbell and us trying to have dinner with Freddie ringing the doorbell. <laughs> he didn't teach any other dogs to ring the doorbell. <laughs> but most of all, I remember him as being fun and loving and a caring person.
So uh, hello, uh, my name is Peter Jung. I'm very honored to be here and proud to call Fro uh, Ron a friend of mine. Met him many years ago, I guess back in the eighties. Um, I also know, know Terry, the people who used to own the house. And by that time they already moved to Palm Springs. And Ron, one day he called me up and said, let's go look at the house. Um, I want you to renovate it, I bought it. <laughs> so next thing you know, we, we came down here. It was in the winter actually. There uh, was uh, snow everywhere. We, we somehow found our way into the, into the place. I looked at it and well, six months later, the work began after a bunch of drawings that went through uh, approval and something, you know, what, what Jeff uh, mentioned earlier, Ron impressed me as someone that is very knowledgeable in everything in architecture, uh, as well as uh, building and construction knowledge. And he is also the one who introduced me to a lot of important people in the Niagara, uh, the city of uh, Niagara Falls because of the uh, historical destination. Uh, it was a lot of work and a lot of loops, you got to hoops, you got to jump through just to get the approval for this renovation. And I'm glad that uh, Ron basically, I don't know, I was a consultant, but he was the one who held my hand and got me through all this process. But fortunately, finally, uh, we actually have a the product here that look, look kind of presentable. Um, fast forward many years, Ron bought this Bentley that uh, we, we took a ride in, in it one day and he was really proud of it. And it was like, I think the third or fourth Bentley owned by then. Um, I was really impressed by the car, but I didn't really dream of one day, I actually I'll become the, the uh, owner of it. So. That actually is a good commemoration of uh, this good friendship, and uh, I would cherish it. So. My name is Mark. I'm a Katie Sudbury. Oh, you want to say? Forget it for me. So, um, hi, I'm, I'm Mark and uh, I'm Katie's husband. Um, as you, people that know me, I know that I hate coming up and speaking in front of people, but, uh, you know, for this occasion, I'll, I'll make an exception. Um, I guess. You know, the first time I met Ron was uh, Katie and I were, were dating and uh, she, it was during your graduation, right? And um, I'd heard lots of things about Ron, didn't know what to expect. So I guess I was a bit intimidated. Um, and, uh, you know, I can tell you that Ron does make an impression when you meet him for the first time. Um, we were at Queens University. I, I think it was, he was, outside walking around and uh, there was a, a good looking gentleman. I mean, he was, you know, he was bald and he was in this incredible white um, suit, full suit. I mean, he was, he was dressed to the nines. So, um, so definitely uh, made an impression on me. And as a lot of people said, uh, was a very knowledgeable, um, you know, cultured uh, man, um, you know, um, I, I found him very interesting. Like he's one of the most interesting people I've ever met. Uh, you can certainly talk to him pretty much about anything and, and he's, got, he's got something to say about it, right? So um, uh, I guess, you know, so I, I kind of thank him for, he made me feel very welcome every time we came for, to come and visit. I mean, he, he was always a, a wonderful host. I mean, we, we love coming here for the incredible food and um, love the dogs, love uh, everything about uh, his property. And, you know, the, the one thing was every time I, I come, I just, it, I would be always astonished at how hard he always worked. I mean, he's such a hard worker. I couldn't believe that he, I mean, I think right till the very end, he was, he kept going and he's, he's such a driven individual. So um, it, it's rare to find people uh, like him. Um, and, 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 and given all that, I know he always took uh, great pens to ask about the kids. Uh, he seemed to have quite a 
a bit of a passion for the kids here. So I, I do uh, really, um, and that's a, that's a good memory of, of him. So, but uh, anyway, just, um, I just wanted to say, you know, Ron's going to be missed and we'll all miss him. That's it. Thanks. Hi, so I'm Katie's daughter. Um, so I remember always being excited every time that Uncle Ron would come and visit us. I remember when I was a kid, um, we went to Winterloo together and I remember us sliding on the tubes down the, um, down the ice slides. <laughs> and he always wanted to be a part of um, whatever it is we were doing. Um, I remember quite possibly the last time that he came to Ottawa, we went to the um, National Art Gallery to look at um, art. And he was always really interesting to talk to. And I always really loved coming here and um, seeing the dogs. And um, I also remember swimming in the pool a lot. I think it's the, I think here is the first place um, where my mom dunked me underwater. <laughs> yes, it was my first swim. Um, so yeah, I always really love coming here and talking to Uncle Ron. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, we're just reconnecting, so just give us a quick moment. Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that. So I have a, um, a letter here from my best friend, Adam and Janie, who um, got married here a couple of years ago. And so because they're my friends, they're also his friends. And this is from them. Ron Folks was a kind man to leave an impression. When we first met Ron, we quickly appreciated how refined he was. A tour of his home would reveal many antique furnishings, ornate paintings, exquisite portraits, all steeped in history. He loved to garden and was frequently found puttering around the greenhouse, spritzing his plants. Ron also loved his cars. On more than one occasion, Ron would be found proudly washing and waxing his cars, even during the first sights of rainfall. He was especially fond of his Bentley, the very Bentley my wife Janie stepped out of on the day of our wedding. I also recall at least three sunny weekends where Ron would have us slide into the smooth back seat of his Bentley with our feet resting com com comfortably on fluffy sheepskin as he toured us around sunny Niagara wine country. In that regard, Ron was fond of wine and his extensive basement wine collection reflected this. Ron could rattle off a wine 
for any occasion and pair it perfectly with any of Jeff's meals in an instant. He loved to educate us about where the wine originated from, the year it was produced, and the conditions leading to its unique taste. He recounted tale upon tale of himself sharing wine with many famous and infamous faces over the years and chuckled as he revealed some um, rascally youth adventures. Along with wine, one of his favorite topics was Her Majesty the Queen and the monarchy. In fact, he loved Britain in general and would laugh heartedly during episodes of Faulty Towers and always tune in just in time to catch the latest episode of the great British Bake Off. Another characteristic, another characteristic of Ron was his stubbornness, which was, dare I say, one of his most endearing traits when mixed with his dry sense of humor. This created the basis of what we would endear, endearingly refer to as Ronisms. <laughs> Sharp, witty, stubborn statements Ron would rattle off, which were shockingly hilarious. When Jeff and Ron returned from any travel together, we would excitedly ask for a recap of Ron's Ronisms. Some of my favorite Ronisms occurred during his encounters with the quacks in the medical system. For example, Ron's cataract surgery visit was chock, was chock full of rich Ronisms. When getting prepped for cataract surgery, Ron was asked to don was asked to don the blue, the popular blue surgical bouffant cap on his head to which he quipped, why must I wear the stupid thing? I have got no hair. To the poor nurse assigned to check in on Ron at regular intervals inquiring, how are you? He would stoutly, he would answer stoutly the same as I was five minutes ago. Um, then upon checking out of the hospital, Post, post surgery, the attendant asked Ron, do you, have, do you have transportation home? He says, yes, I plan to take a hearse, he explained. Ron's stubbornness would also mix with other traits like his deep generosity. Despite our, our stealthiest attempt, we could never successfully pay for a meal when Ron was around. He would practically take offense if we attempted to treat him to anything. The ultimate act of love and generosity we experienced from Ron was his invitation to hold our wedding on his gorgeous Niagara property free of charge to use his precious Bentley in the ceremony and to host my entire bridal party in his very, in, in his very home, for, in his home for several days as he stayed at a hotel. Ron was fiercely generous and truly expecting nothing at all in return. Another obvious trait of Ron's was his intellect and his dedication to the, to the practice of law. He was incredibly dedicated and hardworking. He spent many long hours day after day, year after year on his cases and clients. In fact, his passion for defending others was practically palpable. palpable. I certainly hate to go up against him in court as he could be quite intimidating, but behind his tough exterior, he was really quite a softy. More than, on more than one occasion, we would catch him quietly weeping to a heartfelt lyric of an opera song or gently caressing Marbles or Rexy's head under the dining table. It became clear to us, however, that Jeff was Ron's ultimate muse and the apple of his eye. His eyes would light up at the mere glimpse of Jeff, at the mere glimpse of Jeff, and one could certainly see that his heart was overflowing. He always wanted everything to be perfect for Jeff. On one occasion, he even, he, he even was found to be on his hands and knees scrubbing the grout between the tiles. 
during the early hours of the morning as, as they were, in his opinion, absolutely filthy and Jeff should never have to walk on them in that condition. <laughs> in fact, many of us were able, to, were, were able to get to know and love Ron simply because it was his pleasure to share his beautiful home with any of Jeff's friends as an expression of his love for Jeff. All in all, it was easy to grow incredibly fond of Ron and eventually fall in love with him. He was the type of guy to take care of you and, to sh and show his love in a behind the scenes kind of way. We gather here today to celebrate his life, humor and wit, generous spirit and loving heart. We remember him fondly and we will miss him tremendously. Thank you, Adam and Janie for this. So we're gonna pass this over to, um, if you wanna look at the screen for um, those who are attending the Zoom meeting, for those who'd like to speak, you can go ahead and Selena will cue you in. I'm just gonna ask um, Wes, you are up and then I'll go in order from there. Thanks everyone. I, I hope folks can hear me okay. Oh, this is, I can't uh, hear you, so just give me one oh. moment to work out my awesome technical abilities. Oh, I to press power. Try speaking now. How about now? Yes, you're good. Perfect. Uh, most of the folks on this call, actually, I don't know. Uh, my name is Wes, uh, Wes May. It's an absolute privilege to just spend a second to talk about Ron. Uh, just for a moment or two. Uh, just, just by way of introduction, uh, like Ron, myself, I also am a lawyer. Please don't hold that against me. Um, uh, actually, my grandfather, Jack, and his brother, Bob, are the co-founders of Maple Lodge Farms. Uh, Maple Lodge is one of the, the larger poultry processing businesses in Canada. And, and actually, Ron served as Maple Lodge's uh, general counsel for literally 40 years. Uh, so because of my and my family's really, really long relationship with Ron, I uh, just wanted to share a couple things with everybody today. Uh, the first thing I wanted to share is actually how Maple Lodge came to be a client of Ron's. Uh, it actually started back in the, in the late 1950s or 1960s. Um, as I understand it, uh, Ron's parents, uh, Jake and Vera, were chicken farmers. Uh, and as I understand it, Jake was also a welder, as Ron's father. Uh, so not only were Ron's uh, parents in the chicken business, as my family was, uh, but Ron's dad, Jake, uh, was actually uh, a welder. Um, and so uh, Ron's dad, Jake, actually helped my grandfather, Jack, and his brother, Bob, weld our plant together in the 1960s. Uh, so that is how the relationship actually started. So as I understand it, uh, Jake, Ron's dad, bit of a wheeler dealer, I'm told, which explains why he and my grandfather got along so well. Uh, but as I understand things, that even when Ron was uh, still in high school, his dad, Jake, referred to Ron as my son, the lawyer. And that's how my family's literally 40-year relationship with Ron got started. Uh, so it's not enough to say that, that Ron was Maple Lodge's general counsel. He was actually one of my family's most trusted advisors. So anybody here who might be an accountant, a lawyer, consultant of any kind, uh, the, the holy grail of advisory services is to be somebody's most trusted advisor. So the other two things I wanted to share really briefly are the two reasons why Ron was our most trusted advisor. And you'll, in my comments, you'll hear echoes of things you've heard in the past already, which is pretty amazing to hear. Um, so first, as I said at the outset, uh, like Ron, myself, I am a lawyer. And like Ron, I also practiced in the field of litigation. Uh, and in my view, you know, the, the highest compliment that one litigator can pay to another is to acknowledge and recognize that litigator as a fighter. Not only was Ron a fighter, but he fought so far above his weight class, you underestimated him at your own peril. Ron was a fighter and he fought so far above his weight class. The other reason why Ron was on a, one of our most trusted advisors, uh, myself, my extended family, our executive team at Maple Lodge Farms, you know, we spoke to Ron and dealt with Ron many, many times on many different files. And actually, I had to chuckle to myself, Jeff, at the beginning, you talked about your relationship with Ron and how you and Ron never fought. 
Well, my friends, we and Ron fought a ton. <laughs> sometimes those fights would end with him firing us, and sometimes those fights would end with us firing him. Uh, but we always found a way, you know, found a way back together. Now, anytime we picked up the phone to talk to Ron, uh, you know, wasn't always sure what I was going to get. Uh, but we, you know, we always got wisdom. And you know, the older I get, uh, the more times I go around the block. You know, the more that I am reminded that that in this world, wisdom is in short supply. Ron had wisdom, and we were so lucky that he shared his wisdom with us. So, so to Jeff and to the rest of Ron's family, to everybody at the folks legal team, to David Sawyer, Kathy Neal, Helen, so many other people that we dealt with all the time, both you know, folks legal today and in times past, just on behalf of Maple Lodge and the entire May family, you know, we are going to miss Ron. Uh, we know you're going to miss him as well. We're so sorry for your loss. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Wes. Um, I think we have David and Louisa up next. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's still morning our time here in Kelowna, British Columbia. My name is David Jenkins, and Ron's sister, June Baker, was my late wife, uh, and also Katie's mother and uh, grandmother too, Jade, who you heard from earlier. Many of you already talked about one of Ron's most endearing features, which is his incredible generosity of spirit and welcomeness. Um, people have also talked about his humor, and Katie mentioned one incident oh, that I was caught in with Ron. I think on my very first visit to Berengaria, Ron and I were in the kitchen, I think getting breakfast or lunch or something, and the doorbell rang. And he said, oh, David, please go and see who's at the door. And sure enough, there was Freddie, the German short-haired pointer who had rung the doorbell, and the three Dalmatians all tight wagging their tails, waiting to come in to get their meal. And as I walked back into the kitchen, I heard that the sound of Ron that will always be with me, he had the most incredible laugh. I have never heard anybody laugh quite as Ron did with his whole body and spirit. And I think that was the first time I heard it when he caught me out with the dogs at the door. Um, many happy memories of Ron. Not only did he welcome me into the family when I married his sister, but after her passing and Louise became my new partner, Ron was equally generous in welcoming, welcoming to her. And for that, we should always be very grateful. Um, many happy memories. I could go on for a long time, but many of you want to speak. We'll all miss him dearly and uh, lovely to see you. Thank you so much. I think we have Howard up next. Hi, this is uh, Howard Franken. And Pete Kengetter. Uh, things that we have to say or I have to say are already echoing what so many people have said already. Um, we knew Ron through the Rolls Royce Club and uh, many, many fun memories people talking about his laughter and his energy and his knowledge. And uh, first meeting him myself, I was kind of a standoffish in that he knew so much, but uh, he would teach me about these cars and about my car and our cars. And uh, he'd be uh, extremely generous in his time and his energies. Um, and someone had mentioned about the the train ride that uh, we had at one of the meets and <laughs> with the friends of Charles and uh, <laughs> we all had so much fun and uh, he just exuberated his, his love and, uh, of life and laughter and knowledge of cars and, and everything. Um, opera music that would come on, he would pick that right up. Well, song it was what aura it was from and it was great and uh go out to dinner uh with groups and uh of course he knew all about the wines and uh what would go <laughs> with what food and uh we were all in awe because you know we're just used to drinking chianti whatever <laughs> um we will sorely sorely miss ron and uh, our heart goes out to you jeff and uh, your whole family uh, we're honored that we're able to be with you now and to share our love for him and you. And uh, thank you for this opportunity. Just wanted to, to add that the other part of Ron that, that we love so much was just the love that was so evident that, that he and Jeff shared mm -hmm. with each yes. other. It was, it was really touching and 
moving to us. So um, we, we will remember that as well. He was an example for us all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. That was really beautiful. Um, was there anyone else that would um, like to speak? If you can raise your virtual hand or message me in the chat. One more thing. Oh, I mean, it was too late. I don't see anybody else at the. Oh, one more thing. Sorry, Howard. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, it, it's Pete here. Again, I forgot to say something on behalf of the Rolls Royce Club in, in that we, we just we just came from uh, the Rolls Royce picnic. Uh, a lot of them are on the road now, so they can't uh, be on the virtual, but they want us to make sure we sent their condolences and love and uh, the wonderful fond memories they all had. So uh, from the Rolls Royce Club, um, they send their best. Thank you. Okay, perfect. I have, um, I'm not too sure who the name actually is, might be Lynn. Um, yes. Oh, perfect, Lynn, you're up. Thank you. Um, I don't have anything prepared, but um, I do wanna say that um, I worked with Ron for well over 25 years as his senior litigation assistant. Um, he, he meant the world to me. Uh, we had a great uh, uh, professional rapport. He always treated me with respect. Um, and uh, I, I think we also had a good team of staff. Um, I always think to myself or said to myself that um, Ron was very loud and boisterous uh, at times, as we all know. And I always said he would have made a great politician. Um, but I do recall one funny moment with Ron among many others where um, I went in to ask him for a raise. And, uh, you know, Ron never ever said no to anything that I requested of him. Um, and I went in that, that one year and I asked him for a raise and he says, sure. He says, I'm going to give you that raise that you're asking me for. And he said, do you know why? And Ron sat back in his chair. I always remember, you know, he, he, he sat back in his chair like this, very loud. And he says, do you know why I'm giving you this raise? And I said, because I'm doing a great job. And he goes, not only that but you're the only one that had the balls to come in and ask me for one this year. So I laughed and, and, and we laughed and uh, yeah, I, I, he's dearly missed. Um, not only do I miss my job, I, I just truly miss him. And, and he tried, um, you know, following his surgery, he was a different man, um, but he came into the office and he truck him there. He slept a lot in his chair but he was there because not only was his family his passion, his practice was his passion. And um, I do wanna say that I'm, I'm thankful that I got to, to work for him for the number of years that I did. And I also want to express my deepest condolences to all of his family once again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lynn. Was there... Anyone else that would like to say a few words? Can I say something? Yeah. Okay. Are you, am I on? You are on. <laughs> All right. Okay. My name is Helen and I worked for Ron for the last 11 years and it was a real pleasure to get to know him. I got to know him pretty well over the years. At first, it took me a while to understand what kind of person he was because he seemed really, he's very loud and, and he certainly let you know when he wasn't pleased with you and all that. But so I was a little bit intimidated for a while, but then I got to know that deep down, he's really just 
you know, a big soft pussy cat. And he would always apologize when he got mad. And, but, you know, I had so much respect for him for so many reasons. And um, like, I've never seen anyone work as hard as he did. He was, he was in early every morning and worked at night times and on weekends. And he did his best for his clients, who, by the way, they just miss him terribly, just like all of his employees do. It's just really sad. And even towards the end, you know, like Lynn said, he came in as much as he could. As, and he, he was such a trooper. I've never seen anyone like that. Had a huge, huge amount of respect for him. And he was decent to the core. You know, he donated to a lot of charities. Gave us Christmas bonuses. Um, he was kind and polite. He was funny. He made me laugh so hard so many times. And I really, really miss him. And I'm glad I had the opportunity to work for him and get to know him in the last 11 years. He, he taught me so much. And he was just a class act in so many ways. So condolences to all of his family and friends. I think we all miss him a lot. That's it. Thank you so much, Helen. Was there anyone else that wanted to speak? You're welcome to jump off mute or um, if there's anyone physically here that would still or is called to say a few words, please come on up. Yeah, I don't hear anything, so I'm gonna pass it over to you, Jeff. Uh, no, uh, May, uh, May wants to say something, but May, your uh, your um, uh, microphone is off. So to turn your microphone on. So may I think I can prompt you. So I'm just gonna ask you to unmute and it should come up on your screen. Um, sorry. Uh, may on the on the bottom left hand corner there should be a mute button and unmute that button. Well, I'll give a, a fun side of Ron. He used to tell all his clients. I'm, I'm from Scot Glasgow, Scotland. And he said, there's nothing, excuse me. <laughs> nothing better than having a Scottish person to look after your money. And that's why he always gave me a smile because I was his bookkeeper for over 20 years. God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much. Was there anyone else that wanted to speak? Okay, I'm going to pass it over to you, Jeff. Okay, thank you for everyone um, attending and for those who said some wonderful, beautiful words. Uh, we're going to finish this uh, ceremony by spreading Ron's ashes on this oak tree down by the um, gardens here. Um, the oak tree really reminds me of him, strong, solid, um, stable, and um, that's where he shall rest. So if you guys can, if you guys would like to join me 
down by, it's a little wet because it rained quite a bit yesterday, um, but that's what we're going to do. So Selena, you can grab the camera. May you rest in peace. So thank you for um, everyone for attending and those who are attending virtually and those who are watching after the fact as well as this will be recorded. Um, I appreciate every one of you. Thank you. I don't know if you guys were all able to hear all of that, but thank you so much for being here and attending. And I um, really wanna acknowledge all of you for who you were to Ron and for how you showed up today. So thank you so much and have an amazing rest of your day. Oh, I'm like waving, but I'm not on video. <laughs> Thank you.